Friend, welcome to my kitchen. Today, this is the recipe lineup. We are doing cranberry desserts, breakfasts, cakes, scones, bars, cookies, all the things, and I could not be more excited. It is snowing outside, it's hard to tell, but there is snow coming down, so this just feels like the absolute perfect way to start this baking day. Some of the goodies are going to be for Josh and I, but a lot of it is going to be gifted. So I ran to Dollar Tree this morning and I found these. I haven't seen these at Dollar Tree before. They are cookie boxes and I got two different sizes. Whatever we don't use today, we'll use when we make candies later this month. And then I grabbed some just plain paper bags and I grabbed two different sizes so that I could decorate them. And then I got some bags and some parchment paper for, you'll see how we're gonna decorate the bread but I don't know exactly what I'm gonna need. So I wanted to make sure I gave myself options. I will link all of these recipes down below in case you wanna try making any of these yourself. Some of them I think would be perfect for Christmas day for either breakfast or dessert, something a little different that is not a pie. So we're going to first wash our cranberries. I've got two bags here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wash both of these full bags because we're gonna be going through a lot of cranberries today. I also pulled out some oranges and butter and eggs to come to room temperature. Well, the orange doesn't need to come to room temperature, but I need those out because we are going to be using a lot of orange as well because what goes better with cranberries than orange? It's kind of a perfect blend. So let's get these washed. I am gonna go through all of these and just pull out any ones that aren't looking, they're kind of soft. Those are going to go ahead and get given to the chickens. Quite a few of these recipes can be made ahead and either frozen or just made ahead and put in the fridge if you need a couple days for your holiday baking. I think the one that I wanted to start with first is the cranberry shortbread cookie. So that definitely could be made ahead and frozen. Just the dough. And we're gonna do this one first because it needs to chill for a few hours. And so we can bake all the other goodies while it's chilling. Now this recipe is all in measurements of grams, which is perfect because I just invested in a new nice kitchen scale. So it's gonna make this go a lot easier. And we're gonna do this right here in the mixer. So we're on grams and we need 227 grams. That's 223 grams. I think I'm gonna call that good. And we're gonna get this one cup of butter basically into our stand mixer. I'm gonna go ahead and put my bowl on here so that we can weigh our sugar directly into the bowl. I'm gonna tear this and we need 100 grams of sugar. We'll call that good. I just reread the recipe and it says that we actually need to do this in the food processor. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer my butter and sugar into the food processor. It's not a problem we messed up the KitchenAid because we will use that for a different recipe. What inspired this baking day is I saw my friend Brie from Brie from Scratch and she made this cranberry cake for Thanksgiving that has almond extract in it and it looked absolutely incredible. And to me, I associate Thanksgiving typically with pumpkin and I associate Christmas a little bit more with cranberry and orange. And so I saw that and I thought that it just looked delicious and we needed to make some cranberry desserts. Now this is a shortbread cookie. Shortbread cookies are one of my all time favorite cookie, just a plain shortbread. I've never made a flavored one before. So when I was looking for different recipes to make and I saw this one, this just had to be added to the list. So I have one navel orange here. I'm putting just the zest of it. I'm making sure not to zest all the way to the white part, just the really bright orange part. The white can be super bitter. So we're gonna put that in there. And we are going to mix this. Looks 
like a piece of butter needs a little bit of help getting mixed in. Now we're supposed to add our flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my KitchenAid attachment just right on to the scale. And I'm gonna measure out the correct amount of flour. There, right on the nose. And just a teeny bit of vanilla. Now we're supposed to pulse this 10 times. And we're supposed to add a keeping cup of our cranberries. All right, that's it. I just noticed this recipe did not say to add any salt. And so I'm glad I used salted butter. I don't wanna add any now. If I had realized that, I probably would have added about a half teaspoon. But I don't wanna overwork this dough. Shortbread is one of those things that you really don't want to overwork. So the fact that it's still really crumbly and not a full dough is perfect. If I see a whole cranberry, I'm just gonna break it with my hands and I'm going to just push this dough together. I'm not kneading it or anything, I'm just using my hands to kind of work it together. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. The orange zest is coming through very, very strong. You don't wanna overwork this dough either because the cranberries are going to start to stain the dough. So if you want to try to keep the dough white instead of pink. I saw this recipe actually a last year when I was looking at Christmas cookie recipes and I wanted to make it, but it didn't end up making the list. And so I'm so excited that we're making it today. I feel like this could become a family tradition cookie because it screams Christmas to me. Okay, so how big of a log do we need to make it? We need to make it a 10 to 12 inch log, which that seems probably about right. Okay, this is gonna go into the refrigerator while we start a bunch of other recipes. The next two recipes need to bake in the oven, so I think now would be a good time to go ahead and get the ovens preheated. I wanna start with the cranberry bliss bars because these ones need to cool before we can frost them. Cranberry bliss bars are my sister's absolute favorite Starbucks pastry. And so I'm excited to try these and gift them to her and she can see if they're anything like what Starbucks makes. This is a copycat cranberry bliss bar. Now this is a really unique recipe in the fact that we're actually gonna take white chocolate chips and melt them and put melted white chocolate chips into the cookie dough, which I think is really interesting. So I need 113 grams of white chocolate, which I just measured out here, or two thirds cup white chocolate. And then to that, we're gonna add two sticks of butter or one cup of butter, and we're gonna melt this in the microwave. While that's melting, we can go ahead and weigh out our dry ingredients. So the first thing I'm gonna weigh out is our flour. Oh, I need to tear it first. Perfect, right on the nose. And this recipe calls for baking powder, salt, ginger, which I thought was kind of unique, cornstarch, and one cup of dried cranberries. 
and of course the zest of one orange. So I can set this aside and then while we're still waiting for our butter to melt, I can go ahead and weigh out some brown sugar. I just made up this brown sugar so it's absolutely beautiful. Let me show you how I made this brown sugar while I weigh out my brown sugar. All brown sugar is, is sugar and molasses. Normally when I make brown sugar, I would make it in my KitchenAid because it would go a whole lot faster. But I've got obviously a project going in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it in this bowl. I usually just eyeball it. And now we're gonna mix this together until it's all one color. And just like that, we've got brown sugar. I have all my components ready for these cranberry bliss bars to mix it together, but the white chocolate and butter mixture needs to cool down to room temperature before we can add it. So in this little bit of a break here, I'm gonna take a second and reread my cake recipe to make sure I understand exactly what I'm supposed to do and I don't skip any steps. Number one tip when baking, read the recipe thoroughly. I can't tell you how many times I'm gonna get my beater attachment on my KitchenAid, how many times I have messed up recipes because I didn't take the time to thoroughly read them through. I'm glad I'm reading this recipe because this next recipe also states to melt the butter and then have it come to room temperature. So this would be the perfect time to get this butter melted and then it can sit and cool while we actually finish the bliss bars. Now would be a great time to prepare our baking dish for our bliss bars. Now we are gonna pull these out of the baking dish, so we need to line it with parchment paper. And so many of you told me this trick. That way it'll stay where you want it to stay. And now I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of nonstick spray. Perfect. This is our melted white chocolate and butter. I had it just outside for a minute while it was coming down to kind of more of a room temperature. I've never added melted chocolate to a bar or a cookie or anything like that. So I think that's super interesting. And now that we have all of our components done, this is gonna to come together really fast. So we're gonna to mix together. Would help if I plugged in my mixer. This is a recipe you don't need a stand mixer. You could definitely do this by hand. That's just gonna to come together. I'm gonna to add two whole eggs. We're gonna mix between each addition. It smells so fantastic in my house and we haven't even put anything in the oven yet, but the orange, I can smell the white chocolate, the cranberry I can smell, it's divine. Here's one egg yolk going in. Look at the color on that, absolutely beautiful. Now we're gonna add our dry ingredients, and that's everything. I've already pre-measured everything in here. Mix this to combine. All right, our second batter is done. Oh, you know what? I think I forgot a little bit of vanilla. Let's mix that in. We are gonna bake this for 25 to 30 minutes. This cake recipe sounds divine and I cannot wait to try it. The secret ingredient is almond extract. I associate almond extract with Christmas now. My husband's side of the family is Dutch and one of their traditional desserts that they have every Christmas 
is a dessert called Bonquette, which we made last year together, and I can link it down below for you if you're interested in it. But basically what it is, is it's a pastry crust, like a pie crust, that you put almond paste in and you roll it up in the shape of a log, and it's just absolutely delicious. But the main flavor is almond extract. And I think the combination of orange, vanilla, cranberry, and almond together is just gonna be divine. So the first thing we need to do for this cake is we've got our butter melted and it's coming back up to room temperature. And then we need to beat our eggs and sugar together for three full minutes until light and fluffy. So let me go wash my hands. We're gonna get our sugar in here. The full recipe for this cake will be linked down below. And it says that this needs to beat until it turns light and fluffy and kind of becomes ribbony and beautiful. I'm just gonna let that go. This recipe doesn't have any leavening agent in it. That's why it's important that it beats for a good solid three to four minutes. The egg is what's gonna leaven it. So while that's beating, I'm gonna cut out a piece of parchment paper that can fit inside our cake pan. So this has been beating for about six minutes now and you can see how beautiful, light and fluffy it is. It was supposed to double in size, which that looks like it has to me. We've got our melted cooled butter. We're gonna add that and we're gonna beat this for an additional three minutes. And I think I'm supposed to put my extracts in now. So let me double check that. You all know that I measure vanilla with abandon, but almond extract, I am most definitely going to measure out because it can overpower something pretty quickly. And then we'll measure out our vanilla. And then this needs to beat together for a few more minutes. I've never made a cake like this before, so I'm excited to see how this turns out. It already smells incredible. Friend, look at the magic of this cake batter already. It is so incredibly light and fluffy, unlike any cake batter I've ever seen. Look at it just hold its peak, and that doesn't even have any leavening agent in it. So now that we've got so much air into this, we wanna make sure we keep as much air in it as possible. So we need to add the last three ingredients, which we're not going to mix in, we're gonna fold in by hand. So that's two cups of flour. This is a two cup measure. And then we need to add two and a half cups of cranberries. Get those in there. And our salt. And now we're going to gently fold these ingredients together. This is probably one of the easiest cookie, not cookie, cake batters I've ever made. Even though it did take some time, but the KitchenAid was doing it the whole time. Now my friend told me that this cake freezes absolutely beautiful. So if you need a recipe to make ahead of time, then this just might be the one for you. Now there's no citrus in this cake batter at all, but don't worry, we are gonna get that when we make the glaze that goes on the top. So this cake doesn't have really a frosting, it's more of a, ooh, making a mess, more of a glaze. Our bliss bars are out of the oven and my timer's going off for the cake. So let's look at that. Oh my goodness. I don't think it's quite done. We're gonna give it another few minutes. Since our ovens are preheated, I wanna get going on the next couple ingredients, ingredients, the next couple recipes. And we actually need to chop these cranberries 
and I, I was thinking it might help to chop them if I have a cookie sheet with a cutting board on it so that they don't roll all over the floor. And I have to chop three cups. So I'm just gonna take a minute here if I can and try to chop them at least in half. So we've got the scones and the cranberry orange bread that we're gonna make. If I get each one cut in half, I'll be happy with that. Oh my goodness, this is, <laughs> it's like chasing cats. I don't wanna use the food processor because I don't wanna chop them too much. I think that if they're chopped too much, they're gonna start releasing too much moisture. And if a couple are whole in the cranberry bread and the scones, that'll be just fine. Once you have some cranberries already chopped, you can kind of use them as a little bit of a barrier and that one needs to go and it becomes a little bit easier to keep chopping them. I think I'm almost done here. The first ingredient I need for the bread is buttermilk, which I don't have, so I'm just gonna make some. I'm gonna start with measuring out my wet ingredients and then adding a little bit of lemon juice. Stir that together and let that sit for just a minute while we get some of the other ingredients ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and start out by measuring out some of the wet ingredients while our buttermilk Curdles for a minute, so that's oil. Next ingredient is eggs. Vanilla. We're gonna juice some fresh orange juice. Add our buttermilk. I'm gonna beat this together. Add sugar. You know the drill, <laughs> zest and orange. I could smell the cake and it is done. I don't want it to cook for any longer. I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. I'm gonna let this cool for 10 minutes and then we're gonna turn it out. It smells incredible. Look how beautiful that is. I'm gonna add salt. Baking powder. And lastly, our all-purpose flour. So I prepared two loaf pans. We've got our batter here, and we need to add, obviously, our cranberries. Just gonna fold those in. All right, let's try that again. Much better.
perfection. I want the other side to be the top, so I'm just gonna go like that. Beautiful. We have one more recipe we need to make to get and get into the oven. And then the rest of today is decorating and packaging them up. Now this recipe is what we're gonna be having for breakfast for the next few days, and that is scones. And we also need buttermilk for this recipe, so I'm gonna get some buttermilk going and sitting while we mix up the dry ingredients. This is gonna be really easy to throw together. So the first ingredient for the dry ingredients is going to be two, and I'm looking at the recipe, two and three-fourths cup of all-purpose flour. So that's one, because this is a half cup measure. Nope, this is a three-fourths cup measure. So I'm gonna put this all back in here and grab a different measuring spoon. Which I do need a three-fourths, right? Yep. So we're gonna put one of these in here and one of these, because this is a two-cup measure. Salt, baking powder, baking soda, and butter. I'm gonna use my hands to kind of mix this butter into the flour mixture. Let's mix this together first. I'll just get that in there. When I make scones, I kind of like the butter to be flattened a little bit. So that's good. The zest of an orange. One egg. I'm gonna mix that up right here. Sugar and our buttermilk. You do not want to over mix scones, so I'm going to mix this just until combined. Oh, I forgot the cranberries. That's as much as I want to mix it. Okay, I just kind of folded it on top of itself a few times. Now I'm gonna shape it into a circle. probably one of the easiest things we've made today. Oh, <laughs> I was just gonna say we have everything in the oven that needs to cook. Well, we don't, we still need to bake the shortbread. I almost forgot, but I've got this mess behind me. I didn't wanna put everything away because I knew I was just gonna have to get it all back out because this recipe, all these recipes called for a lot of the same ingredients. So what I, oh, it's snowing again. It had stopped snowing and started raining, but now it's snowing again. Oh, you can even see it a little bit. Oh, the snow makes me so happy. So what I'm gonna do, I think, 
because both my ovens have things in it, I think I'm gonna take a second, reset, get this counter clean so that we can go into glazing and frost. Oh, see, I even have cupboard doors open. Glazing and frosting and doing all that stuff without all of this mess in our way. So here is the before. And here's what we're looking at now. So we got the scones out of the oven. I reduced the temperature to 350. We actually have some snow sticking out there, which I can't believe. The dishwasher is going, and now we can get our shortbread in the oven. So we need the oven set to 350. I've got a cookie sheet out here with some parchment paper on it. And this cookie dough should be nice and firm now. And hopefully when we cut into it, it's not gonna crumble on us. Our bread is almost done. And then we can make the frosting for our bliss bars, which I have right here and they're nice and cooled. And we can make the glazes for the scones and all those goodness. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice and firm. Okay, so we can set that aside. Oh wow, beautiful, okay. It's nice and firm now. So it's gonna hold its shape. I think it's gonna stay nice and round. Maybe I should turn it every time. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring. I want them all to be about the same thickness. How beautiful is that? These aren't gonna spread too much, I don't think. It's time to make the frosting for the bliss bars, which is something I've actually been looking forward to this whole time. In our mixer, I'm gonna put in cream cheese. This is a cream cheese based, almost fully cream cheese based frosting with some white chocolate. So I melted white chocolate. I'm gonna put half of this melted chocolate into, well, I probably put too much in there some of that out because we need this as well for something else. We're gonna beat this together. Now we're gonna add powdered sugar and mix that together. I've never added chocolate, or I shouldn't say that. I guess I've added chocolate to frosting before, but I've never added white chocolate to a frosting before, and I think that's a great idea. So this is our frosting, so we're gonna get this into, or on top of, I should say, our bars and spread it out evenly. I'm gonna go pop these in the fridge just so that they can firm up so I can cut them and we can put them into our boxes. But before I do that, I can see that the bread is done. So I'm gonna pull these out of the oven. Yeah, those are done. This smells absolutely divine. Oh, it's my short bread timer. Now we're gonna make the glaze for the scones in the cake. So we've got some powdered sugar here. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball this, and then we're gonna use the juice from these oranges, so we're not gonna waste the oranges. I think this is the thickness I want for the cake. 
and I'm just going to And I want it a little bit thinner for the scones. So I'm going to rotate this around. This is what it's looking like. I got some of the packages set up so we can start packaging these up. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this whole pan off at my sister's. I think she's gonna be very happy with it. This cake is going to my neighbors and then I wanna get these ones packaged up. I'm gonna save a, probably two or three of these for Josh for breakfast and then we will get the rest packaged up to ship off. But I think they all turned out so incredibly cute and delicious. These, by the way, these shortbread cranberry cookies absolutely phenomenal. One of them may have broke and I may have eaten it and that could become a Christmas tradition. It was so incredibly easy to make that in the food processor. It's so festive and just so delicious. I got these cute little boxes lined with some tissue paper and the cookies have all cooled now nicely. So we can get a couple of these in each one of these boxes. Oh, see, here's the, the one that broke that I may have eaten the broken end off of it. Just stuff that one there. That scone is so big, I can't get two in there. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace that. Friend, I just wanna thank you so much for taking time out of your day as you spent time with me baking up a storm on our first winter wonderland day. I could not have thought of a better way to spend the first snow. That might become a tradition, <laughs> spending time baking in the kitchen when we get our first snow. How beautiful is that? Thank you again for being here. Thank you for being you. Don't forget if you want any of these recipes for your holiday table or just any time this winter, I will link those down below so you can check them out. Thank you for being here. I so appreciate you. And if you wanna watch more of my other videos, I can pop those here. You can enjoy it between now and my next upload. Bye friend, can't wait to see you next time.